are listening to the Motherhood Unstressed Podcast, and I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. Welcome back, everyone, and if this is the first time that you're tuning in, welcome. I am so glad that you're here and that you found the show. Um, I just got back from attending Expo East in Baltimore this year. It's this big natural products expo, and so all these new companies, old and new, really, come to um, show their their products and their, their newest products and what they've got and it's just an incredible gathering of, um, I like to call it heart-centered employees, um, because they're producing products that for the majority are organic and kind of in the holistic health field, um, which to me is incredible. And I love talking to people and meeting people who are of that mindset. Um, they're still absolutely brilliant business people, but they're also, um, I think, a little more enlightened and, and forward-thinking with the way that the food uh, system is going and what we need and what we want as educated consumers um, on the marketplace. So that was really fun. And um, I had I was there as a member of the press from, for this podcast. I was invited to attend. Um, I'd gone to Expo West last spring and that was incredible. So it was nice not having to fly <laughs> five hours for this trip and just to scoot up to Baltimore and um, just meet with all these incredible people. Some of my favorite brands that I got to kind of confer with while I was there, um, Ancient Nutrition, Four Sigmatic, um, Human Kitchen was really a cool one that I connected with that I really liked. Um, what else? Oh, there a lot of like mom and baby companies that are brand new coming out. A lot of interesting stuff that we're going to have on the market. Um, Brain Juice was another really cool one. Um, so yeah, just an incredible experience. And I have to tell you guys, if you ever go to Baltimore, you must stay at Rachel's Dowry Bed and Breakfast. It was like half a mile from the convention center. And I had booked it just because I found it online and it, the price was good and it was close enough so I could just walk every day to the convention. And I got there and I was amazed. This is a historical house on a historical street where George Washington used to travel down from Mount Vernon um, and he would stay at this house. He and his wife would stay at the house when they were you know, traveling because I guess there weren't a lot of taverns in between um, here in Mount Vernon. And so they would just stay overnight. And apparently the room that I was staying in was the room that George Washington stayed at when he came, which blew my mind. And the owner of Rachel's Dowry Bed and Breakfast, her name was Linda, and she gave me a full-on history lesson, uh, a tour of the house. Uh, she spent a good 30 minutes with me talking to me about the city of Baltimore, the history, the history of the house. And um, I just, the whole time I was there, I was really just blown away. Like, is this really happening? Like, is this real life? Um, and then the breakfast the next morning, everything was made from scratch. And Linda came out and just talked to everyone. And <laughs> I honestly didn't want to leave. I felt so taken care of. And, you know, she is not sponsoring this podcast or anything like that. I just feel so compelled to share that experience with you. It was just so, so special. So if you ever find yourself in Baltimore, book directly through her website. I think it's Rachel's Dowry, bedandbreakfast.com, or just Google it and book directly through her. Um, you'll get a better deal than going on booking or things like that. Um, and yeah, so I just, I just had to share that with you because it was just such a special, beautiful experience. I felt like I was back in Europe and it was so historical and just so amazing. I, I just, it was that good. Um, <laughs> but moving on to the topic of the show today, I am speaking with the incredible Jennifer Blossom. She is the podcast host and blogger and we talk all about how to simplify your life as a mother, you know, hacks, things, techniques that you can do to make it so that you're actually enjoying your experience of motherhood, you know, like we all wish that we were doing all the time, um, you know, and you're doing something every day that's incredibly hard. You're dealing with um, just unforeseen situations and personalities and emotions that come up when you're raising kids and then the stress of your own life. Um, and so she has really developed these five core tenets on how to feel more balanced, how to, the things that you can do to live a more balanced life, how you can make a beautiful home and simple things that you can do to keep it that way so you're not spending nine hours on a Saturday cleaning your house. Um, and she also has her doctorate in occupational therapy. So she has a lot of science background combined with a really open uh, sense of vulnerability. I mean, that's really how she started her brand was she was blogging about her experience with anxiety and, and depression and um, you know, issues with her body and things like that. And she got really raw and real and that was healing others. And so it was kind of similar to, you know, my story as well, just blogging and 
as a cathartic experience, but in that process, helping others. And so that's what she's doing, and that's what we're talking about, and I'm so excited to share that with you. So if you love this episode, please share it out uh, on your Instagram stories. Please share it with a friend. Leave us a review on iTunes or just hit those five stars. That would mean so much to me. And uh, yeah, enjoy the episode. Love ya. This episode is sponsored by Motherhood Unstressed CBD. You can purchase our third-party tested organic USA-grown hemp in stores across the country or at motherhoodunstressed.com. Hello, Jennifer. Welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here. I was just on your show a little bit ago, and I just love doing these kinds of swaps because as we were talking about before, talking to other podcasters is super fun and super easy, and the conversation can just flow. So welcome to the show. Yay, Liz. Thank you so much. I am such a fan of you and your work, and it's just such a blessing to be here. So thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we serve uh, really the same kind of people, mothers Mm -hmm. and mothers going through things. So take us through the origin of your brand, Blossoming Mom and Baby, and how that all came to be. Absolutely. Well, it all started, it's funny, Liz, it, when things amazingly like start in a season of struggle. So taking you guys back, I was actually born and raised in a tiny little fishing town just south of Anchorage, Alaska. And I am now actually raising my family here. But like I said, this season, this, this brand was born in a season of struggle for me. I was, I was walking through different types of eating disorders. And I battled with mental health, primarily anxiety and panic attacks, and just learning how to manage those disorders, both, you know, body image wise. And with my mind, it it really led me to having to figure out how to have good self-awareness and how to overcome these struggles. And so as I learned more about myself, my body, I went, went on and got my doctorate and I started to journey about what I was learning, how I was healing. And I started to blog, which is funny how brands kind of evolve sometimes from a blog. And uh, what was, what happened, Liz, was so many moms and women were drawn to my season of vulnerability in my season of struggle. And as I learned these tools for myself, uh, it just became a catalyst for helping moms and, and women in their struggle. So as the brand evolved, I, I then journeyed through two and a half years of infertility. And then in that postpartum period, learning how to manage postpartum anxiety and just all the emotions that come with being a mom and in and, and this season of motherhood. And so today we are at a place where we really can teach moms and equip moms with how to simplify healthy living, um, modern homemaking. So taking care of herself, her children, her husband, her home, so she can be more present and enjoy herself and her kids and just this amazing season called motherhood. So that is kind of a a snippet of where I've been and what we're doing. And it's just, it's such an important piece of my heart. That's amazing. Thank you. When was the point where you were like, okay, this is more than a blog. This is more than, you know, a creative Mm -hmm. outlet. When did you know that this was going to be what it is now, which is this huge platform? Oh, that is, I I remember like distinctly, I was, this is so dramatic, Liz, but I was in a, in a season of panic where I literally had 911 on my phone because I thought I was having a heart attack and I I debated going to the hospital or not because I was, I was so embarrassed. So I didn't, I just laid there on the floor and I was like, well, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. And it was in that pivotal moment where I said, I can't, I can't live like this. So I shared that story online and I shared like my deep, dark moments of anxiety and my deep, dark moments of just, you know, anorexia and exercise anorexia. And when I was able to share those moments and these moms from all over the world, the United States, Europe, Africa, I mean, all over would hold on to these stories and start sharing their stories of postpartum anxiety, of postpartum mm-hmm. depression, of how, you know, this mom hates her body and she doesn't enjoy spending time with her kids. And she's so overwhelmed with motherhood. When I started to receive stories of moms via email, via direct messages, blog comments, I mean, they're pouring over from all over the world, that's when I realized, okay, this is not a blog. I have to figure out how I can share my expertise and these t- and create them into tools for moms because it's not just me walking through this. Oh, absolutely. And I, I mean, that's so true. It's like you really do combine um, all of your you know, education and training with this, all, this ability to be really vulnerable because I think for so many people who want to help others and want to heal and want to share their stories, it's that actual action of sharing and putting yes. yourself out there and getting vulnerable that scares 90% of people. I mean, people are online and all of that, but then they're not really showing who they really are. So right. what, what was it inside of you that enabled you to do that? Because it is so hard. 
Right. To me, Liz, it came down to having very good self-awareness with social media. So we all know that social media is great for connecting, but what's super obnoxious about it is when you get sucked into that highlight reel. And so for me, I was really annoyed with staged perfection. Like, don't get me wrong. I love like a beautiful Instagram feed, right? Like I'm all about that. I'm all about good aesthetic aesthetics. But what, what made me really turn the table of saying, how can I take down my guard, peel back my layers to give moms permission to, to feel, to connect, to stop comparing her life and to really get down to how can we use social media for, 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 a, for good, for a blessing, for a tool to, to help moms, to help kids, to help families. And so for me, Liz, it was just taking a stand of saying, you know what, I'm going to appreciate aesthetics, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to capitalize on a highlight reel. I'm going to get down to the nitty gritty of being vulnerable and having that connection and that community with other moms. Cause that's where change happens. That's where like the magic happens and where we can truly make a difference as moms in our, in our lives and in our homes. Wow. That's incredible. I just love that. Um, at what point in this journey where it's just the brand is growing, did you start the podcast? Oh, I think it was about two, I want to say two years ago, but it also, it started just as like, I mean, we had no idea what we're doing. Right. So we're like, you know what, this audible thing, like it's working. People want to hear us in our earbuds. And so it was just a season of trial and error. It was about two years ago. And Liz, when we started, we were doing three episodes a week. And I'm like, how do we ever, I know it's crazy. I'm like, how do we keep up the like publication schedule? But it was about two years ago. And it was just, I mean, it's how anything starts. It was just kind of just messages about health and women's health. But now over the past, you know, year or two years, we've really been able to cater down to one quality episode every single week and diving deep instead of just casting our net wide of like all these topics, just getting down to the nitty gritty of real motherhood issues. Wow. What have been some of the most memorable episodes that you've had or the most memorable guests? Oh goodness. I would say anything that has to deal with postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, um, any, any kind of like tangible, actionable steps and tips that help and simplify mom's lives. So things like meal prep and food prep and just simple things to make our lives better, whether it's mental health, emotional health, you know, physical health, nutrition, like moms crave that. So just giving them actionable advice that they can apply to their life and make it easier is just like what's really been uh, on fire for the motherhood community. Right on. And what do you think? I mean, there's so many issues out there that we're all facing. Everybody's different. What do you think is the number one issue that the majority of mothers face that everybody is dealing with in some way? I would, if I could combine like everything I teach into one, it's just that moms are so overwhelmed, right? Like we have ourselves to care for and then these tiny humans. And it's not like we come out of high school or college and, and, and are taught like how to be a mom. Like there's no, there's like what to expect when you're expecting, but there's no handbook and you can't really, I mean, was this you too, Liz? Like when you became a mom, like you could read all the books and all the blogs and all the podcasts, but nothing prepares you to be a mother like than being a mom, right? So for me, it is just this overwhelming amount of moms who are overwhelmed with motherhood in all the hats that we wear. And so we're seeing these moms who are stressed out, who are not eating well, who aren't exercising, who are so unattached with her own emotional intelligence or her mental health that she's just walking through motherhood in this fog. And it's crazy to me because motherhood is such a fleeting season. And if we're not taking care of ourselves, emotionally, spiritually, nutritionally, physically. I mean, all these things, how are we going to show up and be the best mom for our kids or the best wife to our husbands? Right. And so it's just this, this passion that I have just to help wake moms up, to get out of this fog and to really stop feeling so overwhelmed. So she can in return be that happy, healthy, present mom and actually enjoy motherhood. Right. Because that is, that's such an important point is, you know, mm -hmm. this is so temporary. We are here it, living these crazy lives, but it's like, if you stop and really look around and be grateful for it, it, it yes. totally transforms. It's just Absolutely. like getting there. So you have, your company has some, some core tenets that I really, really like, and you kind of just touched on them about the spirituality and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Can you take us through, you know, your brand's tenets and, and how that's going to uplevel the listener? Absolutely. So I love to, to approach motherhood from a holistic approach. So I'm actually, I'm an occupational therapist. We, I, I teach an, a practitioner in a very holistic realm mm -hmm. when I'm working with patients. And so what I've done, Liz, is I've applied this approach to motherhood as well. Because I think, especially in today's world, like it's very common for us to get sucked into, oh, just like the latest diet trainer, latest like fitness fad, which is fine, but you 
you as a mom, like you are multi, you are a multi-dimensional being. So knowing that there are multiple pillars to your health is what's super important to help you be that strong, healthy, grounded mom that you are meant to be. And so what I tend to see moms do, Liz, is they'll, they'll cater to like one pillar or the other. So it's like, they'll focus really hard on their food, but they're going to neglect their fitness, their emotional health, their um, spiritual health. So it's, so what we had done at our brand here is we've divided motherhood into four main, or excuse me, five main pillars. So your nutrition, um, physical health, emotional health, spiritual health, and then mental health. And I also like to throw in homemaking as well. Cause I think just being a part of the home is, is just so, so important. So those are the five, six components that we like to teach on and then just really help moms simplify and create routines within each of these areas. So she can be just grounded and whole and have that, again, that holistic approach to her mom life. I love that. And that's, I mean, it's kind of reminiscent of what I learned at IAN. It's like, yes, we are these multidimensional beings and it's not just one thing that's going to fulfill us. I mean, absolutely. It it seems like a no brainer, but then it's like, well, gosh, have I been addressing my spirituality? Have I been, addressing? you know, have I been working out enough or even just going out and getting a walk in? Um, But you're right. It's like, it's, it's that extra step of taking, yes. bringing in the awareness. And I love that you covered homemaking too, because yes. for a lot of people, I think like, oh, well, that's, you know, it's not the fifties anymore. Why is right. it like women? But there's something to be said about creating a really comfortable, welcoming, warm home space. I don't care if yeah. you're a man or a woman. Yes. That and when you have people over or just to have that for your children, I think, I think it's so important and it's so huge. And I think it's a big thing that a lot of people either don't have time for, or they don't have the inclination or even, you know, the training themselves to kind of establish that at home. So what would be your number one tip for creating a a happier home space? That's such a good idea. And I have to say, Liz, too, like homemaking, I think it's such an obnoxious word because like when I hear homemaking, (laughs) I like immediately think of like, oh, like Betty Crocker and like the pinups of like your apron and your like little bonbon hat thing. And like, you're making cookie dough at 2 PM. Like, yeah, that does not work today. So like, (laughs) sorry, I just like yelled at you, but I'm like super passionate about this because homemaking is like modern homemaking. And so how I see it, Liz, is that we spend so much of our time at home and we want to create this, this life giving home where our kids are safe to learn and to grow and to connect. And like in this world that is crazy and dark at times, like we need to have this safe place at our home for our family to thrive. And so what, what we tend to see is so many moms drowning in the abyss that is motherhood, but things like laundry and dishes and just having crap everywhere. And so what has been so helpful for our moms is teaching them simple strategies. So developing a cleaning schedule. So you're not spending nine hours every Saturday cleaning instead of enjoying time with your family. So looking at developing schedules and routines and rhythms inside their home so she can create these warm spaces where her family can love and connect and have dinner at the table and just be just be one, you know, not having it where everyone's coming home and dropping their bags and the house is always a mess because that causes stress. Like that clutter, it causes stress. So how can we create safe havens for our home, for our kids, for and open that to family and to friends and to the community so we can just be a place of life and of nourishment. You know, we spend so much time at home. So really being intentional with that space. And so you can enjoy your space and create memories in your space and have a meaningful space. That's what it's all about. I love that. And are you super interested in the minimalism movement? I am to like, I love it to a degree, but I'm like, also, (laughs) I'm like, I got like, I'm like busy. So that's like, how do we incorporate minimalism as moms? And like, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, this is like definitely like a work, a work in art a work in progress, but I love, I love the idea of it. It's just, how do I make it like realistic for me? But I absolutely love it. How about you? Yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely like, I've watched, you know, the documentaries and listened yes. to different podcasts on it. And I think it's really interesting. And as someone who grew up in a military household, like we were always tossing things in the trash so that the yes. load on the moving van would be lighter. Um, so I'm comfortable with that, but I know like as a mom too, it's hard because kids come with things and stuff. Yeah. And, you know, my husband likes to go camping and he's got fishing gear and all of that. So it is, it is very alluring and interesting yeah. to me because just like you said, um, stuff like a lot of clutter creates stress. Yes. Um, And, and I think a lot of people don't realize that they're being stressed by their environment. They just see it, they keep it moving, they're on their phones, but really the subconscious is noticing it and it's building up and building up and building up. 
Yeah, absolutely. And that's why like, have, so did you, have you watched the Marie Kondo the, on Netflix? I've watched a few, but okay. you know, with the kids, they're like, ah, change it. Yeah. So really like it, either at 11 PM or when they've just dropped off. Yes. The- but I do yes. I love that. And I love like how she gives, uh, you know, gratitude towards them. Yes. Thank you for your service. Like right. my husband had this old Lakers basketball shirt and it was so ratty. He's like, come watch What should I do with it? I was like, I don't know. What do you want to do with it? He's like, thank you for your service. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like that moment was so, I was so proud. So he took that shirt, threw it out. I'm like, yes. Yeah. So just having this approach of only have what you need in your home and just creating a space that's functional for you and for your family. That has been the game changer for us. I love that. I love that. And so, you know, with the brand as it is now, where do you see it going in the future? How, how would you like to see blossoming uh, mom and baby touch as many people as possible? Yes. You know, we live in such a beautiful era of the digital world. And so when I think about the future, I just, I am open to however, I mean, every single year I'm amazed at how far we've come. And so just being able to capitalize yeah on our services and to reach into the hearts and the homes of moms all over the world, transforming how they show up and take care of themselves and their kids and to create and transform those legacies. Like that's what I want. I want to go into the deep valleys of third world countries and just to get my hands like into these homes of moms and just to, with whatever they have, just help helping them show up and just live their best mother mom life. Like that's, that's what I'm all about. So I I mean, I have no idea, but I, Digging up and dreaming up these huge dreams and then just trusting the process and just continually stepping forward with a serving heart. I think that's when just doors open. No, I think you're right. I think, you know, you're putting it out into the universe, having the right intention behind it. Anything is possible. Yes. Can happen. Absolutely. I love it. So, you know, for our listener now who's feeling motivated, feeling like they know they need to do something, but they're not really sure where to start. Uh, We're almost to the end of the interview, but I do want to leave them with something. What are the three big things uh, that they should start doing, maybe even today? That's such a good question. So I w- always suggest like doing a motherhood assessment. So if you go out, get a piece of paper and a pencil. And the first thing I want you to do is I want you to assess your mental health right now. So thinking about things that not to like steal Marie Kondo's words, but thinking about things that honestly like bring you joy in your life. So your kids, your husband, your space, like what is it that brings you joy in your life and write all of those things down. And on the other side, think about things that suck your joy out. So it could be certain people, certain events, maybe you have like really bad thought patterns or you perseverate on certain things. So having that list of things that make you happy and thriving in this list of stuff that just really suck the energy and the life out of you and really working at how can I bring more of this joy into my life and prune out all of this crap, or maybe like these bad habits that are sucking the life out of me. That's what I would work on first for your mental health. So that's your first tip today. The second tip is looking. So we're going to combine nutrition and fitness. So really looking at your habits nutritionally and physically and looking at, okay, what am I doing right now in my kitchen? Am I seeing, am I using food in a way that's going to nourish my body? That's going to nourish my kids? Or am I just like chaotic with no dinner plan, with no meal plan, and just like flying by the seat of my pants? I'm getting fast food. I'm doing freezer meals. I just a mess in the kitchen. So honestly, looking at that area and seeing if you need a little bit more self-discipline in your kitchen, same thing with your fitness. Like, are you showing up and exercising every single day or every other day? Or are you bringing your kids into your fitness? Or are you making an excuse because you don't have time to work out? So really looking at your nutrition and your fitness and prioritizing that because those are two huge components for you moms. You, and you know, like mm-hmm. when you eat better, when you move your body, I mean, it is the world of a difference in everything that you do. So that's your second, your second part of your homework. The last thing is really looking at that emotional and spiritual component. And this is such an important piece. I know like Liz, this is so important for you as well, but honestly, you guys, like we are spiritual beings. And so understanding that, that there is such a spiritual component to who you are and making time and space for that in your day, like whatever that means for you, it is so important. Cause I think Liz, what, it, what we tend to see with so many of our moms is that they wake up, you know, 
at the crack of dawn, like when their kids wake up and it is just go, go, go nonstop. We are murky, we are cloudy, but what I want you guys to do is to carve out, even if it's five to 10 minutes before your kids up, make that space, that time for you to get grounded in your soul, like before you start the day. And to also, I'm going to challenge you to have two to three spots throughout your day where you intentionally are creating margin are creating white space to reconnect because it's one thing to start your day, but you also need to refuel yourself throughout the day. Like you can't just go on a, like on an empty gas tank, the whole, the whole day, you have to create that white space and don't fill it with mindless activities Mm -hmm. like social media or scrolling online. Like you need to have that discipline to be able just to be with your own thoughts and to think and to purge your mind and just to get grounded. That's super important to start your day, to have it in the middle of your day and to end your day as well. So those are like super meaty tips, but those are the three things I think will really, really help your listeners today. Yeah. I love that. And I think, yes, hearing that it's like, Whoa, where do I begin? But at the same time, like don't overcomplicate it. Like Mm -hmm. you just went through those three things and, and just did an assessment. I think that that would be really powerful and really change the game. Um, as far as like grounding yourself in the middle of the day, do you mean like meditation or do you mean like smelling essential oils or what do you like? Oh man, it can be like both. So what if meditation, um, having essential oils, like I love diffusing essential oils, going outside, getting for a walk, just getting those distractions out and just tuning back into yourself and just getting like just out of the world and into just your, your, your stillness. Like that is so important. I love, I love, are you, you're into essential oils too, right? I do. I have my, I have my favorites. I love, um, like Rose and, um, tea oh. oil is always really rejuvenating for me. So yes. my go-tos, there's so many more though, that I haven't even touched. I'm sure are just amazing. Absolutely. Well, and what's funny, I know we're almost done here, but when I was in grad school, getting my doctorate, I actually did a case study on the power of essential oils. And so you like, when we smell you guys, whether you're smelling the essential oil out of the bottle or you're diffusing it, or you have it on your skin or like whatever you're doing with it, our olfactory system. So it's like a mini, mini science lesson. So Love when it. we smell, um, that olfactory sy- system, it's connected to that limbic system in your brain, which is like the center for your emotion. So there is like true scientific study in research that shows like that connection between what we smell and it can, it can literally help you calm down. That's why we help, or that's why we, we hear like the suggestions for lavender or citrus mm-hmm. or rose or like whatever, or like when you smell like cookies, like and you, it immediately brings you back to like your grandma's house or Christmas or whatever, like just finding and touching on those senses, smell, um, nice classical music, just tapping into a multi-sensory component to help you calm down, to not have those distractions and just to center is, that was like a super long tangent, but it's just so important. It's so important. No. And I love that you actually have like the science education behind it to say, yes, this is not woo-woo. This is real. And this is going to help you. I love that. Absolutely. And maybe the most important thing you said was don't just get on your phone and mindlessly scroll. Oh. And I am as guilty as anyone doing this. And when I find that I've been doing, I'm like, oh, I have to throw the phone because I'm like, oh my God, I just lost like 15 minutes of my life. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's so true. And it's so easy, especially like us, like 99.9% of our business is online. And so being very intentional, you guys, what I even suggest is, is like having set times where you check in and, you know, give yourself permission to go on a huge unfollow binge, like unfollow accounts that don't bring you encouragement or inspiration or make you feel better. Like we all have those accounts where it's just like, Oh, it causes us to like look at our life and kind of judge ourselves. So just giving you that yourself, that permission to have this social media cleanse, if you will, And just have those set times during your day where you're like, okay, I'm going to go on. I'm going to check Facebook for 10 minutes, Instagram for 10 minutes. and I'm going to be done because we can get sucked into this huge dark pit of like social media. And then we all know that like that, oh my gosh, that screen time clocker thing on the iPhone. It's just like, how did I spend that much time online today? It just, it is a, it is a sucky hole that will suck you in. So just being very mindful with that and not filling your margins, your white space with that is super important. Yeah. I like how you talk about time batching cleaning and now it sounds like time batching social media. I could definitely get on board with that. Yes. Yes. I love it. So now it is the time where we uh, go into our rapid fire questions. If you are ready. Oh, I'm like a little nervous for this. (laughs) No, it's fun. Okay. Motherhood is. Oh, motherhood is messy and beautiful. Hmm. I'm grateful for. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm grateful. Sorry. I was like, mm-hmm, it is. I am grateful for most seeing beautiful. I am grateful for, I'm grateful for my son. I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful for being a mom. I love that. And what's something that the world needs? Love, more love, more light. 
I love it. And last one, what's something that you've learned in life that you wish someone would have told you earlier on? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to chase dreams, to knock on doors and just to, to share your message with the world. I think we're so, so easily caught in comfortable, but it's when we step outside in those uncomfortable zones that where the true magic happens. Oof, I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, so where can everyone find your podcast online, check out the website, check you out on social media, give us all the details. Absolutely. Thank you for that opportunity. Uh, we are on iTunes at the blossoming mommy and baby show also on Stitcher or wherever you tune into podcasts. Uh, it's a podcast just for moms. So just because it has the word baby in it, we would still love to have you on there. It's a, just an amazing, encouraging show for motherhood and, um, all the seasons of mom life. And then of course we are at blossoming mommy and baby.com and our most popular, uh, social media platform is over on Instagram. We are at Boss Mean Mommy and Baby. And for everyone listening, her podcast just got an award for one of the best podcasts for moms. So that's a super huge deal. Woohoo! Yay! Thank you, Liz. Yeah, so it's so, so good. I love it. Uh, thank you so much, Jenny. This was so much fun and I learned a lot and I feel like, I don't know, just after this conversation, I'm going to be better at organizing my time and my life so that I can actually be more present and enjoy motherhood as crazy as it is. Like we talked about Um, But thank you. Thank you for sharing all of your knowledge. Absolutely. And Liz, thank you. I just want to tell you too, just what you were doing is just amazing. And so just keep, keep shining your light girl, because you are a force in the motherhood world. And we, we just love you and your message. So you keep doing what you're doing and it's just, your work is incredible. Oh, thank you. You have been listening to the motherhood unstressed podcast and I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. If you found any kind of value out of this conversation today, please share us on your Instagram stories, tag us at motherhood unstressed and hit those five stars. It literally takes five seconds to do that. And you will feel so good for uh, giving back to the show if we have given anything to you. Have a great week. Love you guys.